to be our morning Bible study lesson and celebrating our 16 year church anniversary this morning. Amen. Get a lot of hand clap of praise. We come to worship him in spirit and in truth. And I hope this lesson will be a blessing to you. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for those that are here under the sound of my voice. We thank you for those that are normally here today and are not. We pray that your spirit will guide them safely here this morning. Father, let the words of my heart and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in our sight, my Lord and my Redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I want to talk this morning from a topic. What they did to Jesus won't matter what they do to me. What they did to Jesus won't matter what they do to me. Because he went out before me and he paved the way. And if he went through for the gospel's sake, not his own personal sake, but for the gospel's sake, I'm willing to go through what I need to go through on his behalf. Because the Bible says that we are ambassadors of Christ. And we are to let our light shine in this world before men. That they may see our good works and glorify our Father which is in heaven. So I just want to encourage you today, and that'll be our Bible study topic this morning, on what they did to Jesus won't matter what they do to me. And if you have a Bible today, I want to use the encouraging words of Jesus in John 16, 33. John 16, 33 will be our opening scripture for this morning. And listen at the words of Christ to his disciples. He says, these things I've spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. See, peace comes in Jesus. Mm -hmm. In the world you should have tribulation. He said, in this world you live in, you're going to have a little trouble and trial sometime. Mm -hmm. Little adversity in this world. He said, but be of good cheer. Don't be down spirited. Don't be down hearted. Be of good cheer. For I have overcome the world. Because your peace is in Jesus, remember. And if my peace is in Jesus, not in myself, not in my surroundings, not in my bank account, not in my marriage, not in my health, not in my youth, not in my looks, not in my position, not where I live, not in my house, not in my possessions. My peace is in Jesus. So if my peace is in Jesus, he says, be of good cheer. Because I've overcame the world. And if I overcame it, you can overcome it. So what they did to Jesus won't matter what they do to me. Because my peace is in him and not in my possessions. Amen? So if my peace is in him, I only find the peace like he knows and like he gives. I find that through him, not in him. Because I'm in him and he is in me. It's not through the things that he's blessed me with that I find peace. It's not of my current condition or my past condition or my future condition. It is what I have in him right now. The relationship I have with him causes me to have peace because I know I'm in his hollowed hand. And he says, no man can pluck you out of my hand. And if no man can pluck me out of Jesus' hand, I can be at peace. So what they did to Jesus, and they did some horrible things to him, and he was God in the flesh, won't matter what they do to me. They crucified an innocent man, and he was willing to go to the cross because that was the will of the fall. And so we ought to be at least willing to carry our cross on his behalf. He says in his world, if any man come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross daily, and follow me. Uh -huh. Jesus, I want to say a few things about this Jesus we serve. He was the greatest man to ever walk the planet. He was actually God in the flesh. He was the greatest man to ever walk this planet. Mm -hmm. He was actually God in the flesh. Mm -hmm. God cared about us so much. That it came down in the form of a man, wrapped flesh around his spirit, and dwelt among us, and fellowship with us, 
and communed with us and taught us his word and left us his precepts that we might know how to carry ourselves until he returns for the second coming. That's what church will do for you. Teach you the principles and the oracles of God. Church ought to change. Church is a place of comfort and of worship. Place of peace. Where we come to experience God's touch every Sunday. He said, well, two or three are gathered together in my name, that I will be in the midst of it. He was the greatest man to ever walk this planet. <clears throat> he was God in the flesh. Gotta remember that. And he was tempted at all points, just like you and I. But he was so focused on his mission, he didn't get caught up in the affairs of this life in this world. Point number two, he was sinless. He did not commit one violation of God's law or will. Yet, they still crucified. He was sinless. He did not commit one violation of God's law or God's will. That's why he tells us, be of good cheer. Be in good spirit. Because I overcame the world. And if I overcame my situation, my trials, my temptation, you can overcome yours because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. In the world. He was sinless. He did not commit one violation of God's law or God's will. God's will meaning what God intended for him to do. He stayed course and he not detoured to the left or to the right. Mm -hmm. Amen. Point number three. He had the greatest compassion than anyone. He was a merciful person. Right. He had so much compassion for people and for those that were in need and for those that had diseases and sicknesses and demonic spirits. The Bible says he healed them all. Mm -hmm. All that would come to him, he healed them. Mm -hmm. Because he would have compassion for his followers. Just like he has compassion for us today in 2016. Mm -hmm. He had the greatest compassion in anyone. He was a merciful person. Mm -hmm. So many times people cried out. Son of David, have mercy on me. My daughter is grievously vexed with a demon. My daughter is at the point of death. One time he interrupted a funeral to raise someone from the dead. The woman had the, the issue of blood. She said, if I, could, but if I could but touch the hem of his garment, I know. I know if I could get to him, he'll fix me up. Because she knew he was a merciful God. And a merciful person. Point number four. He gave his life as a ransom or a payback for all those who wanted to experience the free gift of salvation. He gave his life as a ransom or a payback for all those who wanted to experience the free gift of salvation. For all those that wanted to get a new start on life and fix what Adam and Eve had messed up in the garden. That is the perfect relationship we had with God in the past. We once had a perfect relationship with God. But that was destroyed because man wanted to live independently from God. Man did not want to live under the guideline of God. Man wanted to go his own way despite the Lord being over them and and, and blessing them with all the blessings that they had. They wanted to detour from the path that God had challenged for them. Just like a lot of us today. We want to live apart from God. We don't want to live within the guidelines of Christianity. We love the world and the things of the world. But friendship with the world is enmity against God. He said love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. Because the world fades away. But the relationship we have with God will be eternal. The stuff we love in this world will fade away one day. But the relationship we have with God will be eternal. What they did to Jesus won't matter what they do to me. 
because he paid it all already. And then he gave me the power and the strength to press on despite our many trials and storms and tribulations. Point number five. He is and was the greatest encourager of all time. He is and was the greatest encourager of all time. He is known for popular phrases such as a few of these that I wrote down. He says, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. Now you can't get no more encouragement than that. When you feel like quitting, when you feel like throwing in the towel, when you feel like turning your back on God and giving up, he says, I'm with you always, even to the end of the world. He is and was the greatest encourager. He goes on to say things like, the works that I do, you shall do also, and greater, because I go to the Father. So I'm going to leave this mission in your hands. And the works that I did, you should do also, and greater, because I go to the Father. He's encouraging us, even today, to not give up. We walk by faith, not by sight. God is in control. No matter what it looks like today, God is still in control. Right. We walk by faith, mm -hmm. not by sight. That's right. He says things like this. I will never leave you or forsake you. I will never leave you or forsake you. I will never turn my back on you. For those that truly come to me out of sincere heart and have placed their faith and trust in me. Hmm? Mm -hmm. He says, I am the good shepherd. I lay down my life for the sheep. No man take it from me, but I lay it down on my own choice. And if I lay it down, I can pick it up again. I'm the good shepherd. I'm not like the hired. He said, the hired and see the wolf coming and flee it because he's paid to be there. He said, I'm not be being paid to be here. I'm here to die for you. I'm going to lay my life down. No man take my life. My father commanded me to lay it down, so I'll lay it down. But if and when I lay it down, I'll take it up again. I'm the good shepherd. He's the greatest encourager. He said, greater love has no man than this, than a man lay down his life for his friends. Then he calls us friends. We no longer servants. We started off as servants. He said, for the servant don't know what his master doeth. But all things that the Father made known unto me, I have revealed unto you. From henceforth I call you friends and not servants. Hmm? Amen. The works that I do, you should do also. I'm the good shepherd. I lay down my life. Then he goes on. He's the greatest encourager. He said, I give unto you the keys to the kingdom. I'm going to give you these keys to my kingdom. And whatever you loose on earth, I'll loose it in heaven. Mm -hmm. That's right. Whatever you bound on earth, I'll bound in heaven. Because I'm giving you the keys. That's right. I'm giving you the authority to execute and do my will here on earth. That's right. And I won't leave you comfortless. Nope. I'm going to send you the Holy Ghost. Yes. That's going to come live in you. That's right. And he gonna, whatever he hear of, of the Father, he's going to make it known unto you. And when you pray little prayers that cannot be understood or uttered from men, the Holy Spirit will take what you said and bring it to the Father and explain it more clearly to the Father. Mm -hmm. right. He encourages right. us right. to keep on pressing on. Yeah, right. I give you the keys to the kingdom. Mm -hmm. And whatever you lose or bound, I'll do it in heaven. All but right. you first got to do it on earth. And he says on that, he says he goes on, he's the greatest encourager. I'm telling you, he encourages us. Mm -hmm. He said, I give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions yes. Yes. and over all the power of the enemy mm -hmm. and nothing shall by any means hurt you. I'm giving you power 
over the devil, sickness, and disease, and nothing shall by any means hurt you unless you let your faith fail. Huh? I'm giving y'all that power, he says. He said, ask and you shall receive. Anything you ask the Father in my name, I'll do it. You can't be no God like that. Anything you ask my Father in my name, I'll do it. He said, give and it shall be given unto you. Give, that's whatever you give. You want to be loved, give love. You want to receive money, so money. Huh? Whatever you want, he said, you give it. He said, whatsoever you would that men should do unto you, do you even so to them, for this is the law and the prophets. That's the golden rule of the Bible. He goes on to encourage us. He said, if you have enough faith as a grain of a mustard seed, the crumb off the seed, not the seed, but the dust from the seed, you can say to your mountains, be cast over yonder, and all your mountains will be cast over yonder. He's the greatest encourager. He says, I love you so much that I'm going to prepare a place for you. I'm going to die for you. I'm going to go ahead of you. And I'm going to go prepare a place for you that where I am, ye may be also. He said, my father's house of many mansions. He said, if it wasn't so, I'll tell you. If it wasn't so, he said, one day we're going to get to sit at the marriage supper of the Lamb. Huh? One day we're going to be where he is. Don't be discouraged by this here. Because this life here you live in now is just temporary. Your life is like a vapor. You hear the day and go on the mark. I'm getting ready to close. Look till the next day. He's finna close. He's finna close. He demonstrated the great example. He demonstrated the great example of love by dying for people whom he knew would betray him. It's one thing to die for some people that you love, but it's another thing to die for your enemies. He died for the whole world. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believing in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him, the world, and it says friends, and it says uh, uh, followers, his enemy, he said, but that the world through him might be saved. That whosoever will come, comes. He that believe it on the Son is saved. He that believe it not on the Son is condemned already. He died for his followers and his enemies. That's the greatest example of love. That you die for people that you know don't love you. He demonstrated the greatest example of love. And there's no greater example of love than dying for someone. Or dying for a cause. And I'm closing with the last point, seven. That was point number six. And he was the greatest encourager was point number five. Mm -hmm. He gave the greatest gift. Death was not his gift. Death was his calling. He came to die. Mm -hmm. Death was not his gift. His gift is salvation. His gift is salvation to the world. Mm -hmm. That was his call. He came to die. Right. He came to go to Calvary. Mm -hmm. He came to be betrayed. Mm -hmm. He came to go to the cross. Mm -hmm. That was his calling. Uh -huh. But his gift is eternal life. Uh -huh. He gave the greatest gift to this day. Uh -huh. And that is eternal life with him. Right. Not just eternal life, but eternal life with him. Because some people are going to have eternal life in damnation. And that's apart from God, which is the second death or the final death. Because the second death is the lake of fire. But that's when you you make it to the second death, you remain there. So we can say the second death and the final death, which is the lake of fire. But you, there'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth. You live there eternally. But that's not the gift God gave to men. The gift God gave to men is eternal life with him. That where I am, you may be also. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourself. It is the gift of God, not of works. At least any man should what? Boast. Uh -huh. That's right. That's right. So he gave the greatest gift. I know for Mother's Day and for Christmas, 
and your wedding anniversary and your birthday, you give good gifts, flat screens and diamond rings. But you can't take them gifts with you. Huh? Somebody was happy their husband bought them a new house and a new car. But the greatest gift is eternal life with Jesus. Not just eternal life now. Because we all going to live forever somewhere. But those that go on to live with the Lord receive the greatest gift. And not because he gave it to them, because he offered to them, and they receive it through faith. Let us give the Lord a hand clap. What they did to Jesus won't matter what they did to me. Because he said he overcame and we should overcome.